Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. NERSA has published ESCOM's tariff application after a long delay and a court case. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the application and the upcoming consultation process. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. Why has the consultation paper and the tariff application been published so late in the year? Yes, I think the initial expectation is that we would have this all done and dusted before the end of this year. But um, quite late in the day, uh, NERSA rejected ESKIM's application on the 30th of September. This application was made on uh, formally on the 2nd of June, but there was a draft with NERSA from March already. So they had some insight into what ESKIM was requesting. But on the 30th of September, the rejection was made on the basis that the methodology used by ESKIM was based on a methodology that NERSA claimed had expired uh, because it uh, really related to the MIPD4 control period, which ends next year at the end of March. And this new application is about the MIPD5 uh, control period, which is supposed to cover the upcoming three-year tariff period. Um, Eskom then took this matter to court uh, on a semi-urgent basis, saying that we need a determination for legal implementation on April 1, at least for uh, the coming year, so for the 2022-23 financial year of Eskom. And the court agreed with that, but the court uh, didn't apply its mind fully to uh, whether the, the methodology uh, that was in dispute should apply to the outer two years. Therefore, it's confined uh, to the 2022-23 financial year. And that was a determination made by the court uh, only last week. And then NERSA was given an order by the court to immediately start the process of public consultation so that by the 25th of February next year, there is a NERSA determination which could then go to Parliament uh, as is legally required by the 15th of March next year so that a legal uh, tariff could be implemented uh, from April 1 next year. And obviously we know then there's a lag before the municipal tariff kicks in uh, in July. That's then the financial year of the municipality start. So that's really the background to the delay. There was a, a dispute over the methodology. It went to court. The court has ruled in favor of Eskom just for the one single year getting a, a, a tariff determination. So we're not going to have the full MYPD 5 3 year application heard, uh, but we're going to look at only the single year but we do have now visibility of what ESKIM is looking for with the release of the application, not just for next year, but for the coming three years. What is ESKIM requesting for next year? Well, the headline figure is 293 billion rand. That's made up of 279 billion as part of the actual application itself. And uh, for MIPD5, which you know is the usual suspects of primary energy international purchases, RPP uh, payments, the environmental levy, the carbon tax, arrear debt, and its operating costs, and then, of course, the depreciation. Um, uh, and then, uh, in addition to that $279 billion, there's been regulatory clearing account applications approved by NOSA worth $14.4 billion, and uh, ESKIM is assuming that that will be liquidated in the coming financial year, as has been indicated, it would be by, by the regulator. So if you add those two figures together, it's 293 billion rand, and that would equate to a tariff increase if Eskom gets everything it's asking for, uh, which is a big if, uh, that would equate to a 20.5% tariff adjustment upwards. There was some initial confusion about whether the request might be for higher than 20.5%. Yes, I think the NERSA consultation paper that was released along with the, um, the tariff application of ESKIM did have a, a fairly confusing table in it. <clears throat> the table uh, sort of shows all the outstanding RCAs that are still needing to be adjudicated and haven't been determined yet, and the full amounts of those, which we know ESKIM doesn't always get. It also includes the full clawback from NERSA illegally deducting uh, the equity ejections from 
Eskom's allowable revenue that was done for the MYPD4 period that went to court. The court ruled in Eskom's favor. 10 billion of that has already been added back, but uh, there's a Supreme Court of Appeal matter that still has to be heard, uh, which, which relates to the balance of that 69 billion. So that is all included in, in that nurse table, which gave a very alarming picture for 2022-23 of uh, sort of a, a, a tariff that would be between 50 and 54% hike if all that were to be added back. So um, uh, in its response to the, uh, the uh, tariff uh, application, as well as the consultation paper being published this week, uh, Eskom did put out a clarification that they're not seeking all those amounts and therefore it was a misrepresentation of what they were seeking. They're only expecting this 14.4 billion liquidation of the RCA and then what they've asked for as part of the MYPD five in terms of all those other costs, primary energy through to operating costs. So there was that clarification. So I think that it would really be about what now during the public consultation, what um, a pushback the public will give uh, from that already very high level of 20.5 and what uh, um, wriggle room nurse already has given uh, that you can see we can see the backlog that has built up through previous determinations that have been made or not been made by nurse they've now put that clearly in a table there's a huge backlog uh, of clawback that Eskim is entitled to which leads to quite scary figures the smoothing of this tariff trajectory is going to be important, particularly in the context of a very still fragile economy. We, we've uh, had a bad negative quarter of economic growth, although we are going to obviously recover from that 2020 COVID lockdown year. We're still in a fairly precarious position from the economy, and I think that's going to be a big focus of the public hearings that are coming up. What process will be followed now? So the uh, court order made the timeline very clear and nurses actually stuck uh, religiously to that court order. So the paper and the tariff application have now been published on its website and are available for public scrutiny. Uh, written comments are open until the 14th of January. And then there'll be a process of virtual public hearings on a provincial basis between the 17th of January and the 21st of January, starting with the West, Western and Eastern Cape on the 17th. These will be happening on Microsoft Teams. So it will be interesting to see how many people access these relative to when we used to have the uh, in-person, in-contact uh, hearings. But NURSA has become quite proficient in this and they've been doing quite a few of these virtual hearings over the last couple of years. We'll move to KwaZulu-Natal, Free State, and Pumalanga, Limpopo, Northern Cape, <clears throat> and the Northwest Province before ending on the uh, 21st of January with Kauteng hearings. Then there'll be a deliberation process with uh, the Electricity Subcommittee expecting to make its recommendations and reasons for that recommendation on the 2nd of February. And then the Energy Regulator itself sitting uh, on the 25th of February to make a, a determination. That's all in line with what the court has ordered. And if that is done in terms of that process, uh, which we can expect is going to be fairly robust given the, what ESCOM is requesting, we should have a determination by the end of February that can go to parliament in time uh, for a legal implementation on the 1st of April. Uh, and then obviously the municipal tariff hikes kicking in from the 1st of July. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.